Today we're going to take a look at the Corsair Iron Claw RGB wireless mouse. Do a quick overview and give you my thoughts. First off, a couple of the features that Corsair states about their product. Uh, it does th have three types of connections. One is uh, the sub one millisecond 2.4 gigahertz slipstream wireless connection. Uh, you can connect it via Bluetooth or USB wired. Um, it's advertised as having shape for palm grips, which I would agree. An 18,000 DPI optical sensor, 10 programmable buttons, which you use uh, Corsair's IQ software to do that, as well as um, it advertised having 50 million click rated OMROM switches. And I will say, that these switches do feel very nice. The mouse is clicky, this, the clicks are distinct, uh, they feel nice, they feel solid uh, for the most part. Um, and we're gonna get into that in a second here. To use uh, the mouse um, will require you to download IQ software, which that is the main point of contention from reviewers uh, all over. Uh, the, that is the top, I guess frustration and I will agree well IQ software does have some downsides in how they have the programming for this set up and I'll show you that um, there's a learning curve to it and like anything else once you learn it is not that bad I'm not a fan of IQ myself for with regards to how they have it for programming uh, mice and keyboard functionalities I think that there's other softwares that they could have taken um, Q from if you will um, as to how to program an item, such as, I don't know if anybody remembers uh, Mad Cat's uh, MMO mice that they had out there, but they used Satex software that was very easy to program. You go in, you select the mouse, uh, the mouse button that you want to program, and you set whatever the function is. And the nice thing is you can see the overview of it. Same thing with Rocket's software, their uh, Swarm. Um, you you can see what it's attached to with this. It's not quite that simple. It requires some, I guess, remembrance, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, the software could be better. But outside of that, um, we're gonna get through uh, this mouse here. Pricing, they do have the mouse on Amazon at $79.99. Uh, same thing on Newegg, $79.99. It seems to be the price that's pretty much everywhere. I haven't found it for any discounts as of yet below that. Um, there are some pe people that are trying to mark it up beyond MSRP. I'm not sure how they think they're going to get that kind of money. But regardless, it's an $80, $80 mouse. And so at least you know what you're getting into money-wise there. As far as unboxing this goes, it's pretty straightforward. It's a simple box. Can't say it's anything really exciting with the packaging. Some places, obviously, they really overdo their packaging, not Corsair. Real simple. And obviously it's got your USB to micro cable that you will need for setup. The mouse itself, it's got a nice feel to it. It's um, not overly heavy, not overly light. I do prefer a uh, slightly heavier mouse than I think than some people do. Uh, I'm not a real big fan of the light mice. And then um, it's also got your wireless dongle. So pretty straightforward as far as an unboxing goes. As far as setup goes, it's real straightforward. You plug that little wireless dongle into the uh, USB port in the back of your computer. Um, turn over the mouse, switch it to, well, your choice. You can do Bluetooth and connect it via Bluetooth as long as you do have 4.0. Bluetooth functionality on your computer or better. Um, or you switch it over to the 2.4 gigahertz wireless, which I did. And the nice thing is it automatically connects. So real straightforward and right off the bat, we are functioning. I do like that aspect of this. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, if you didn't have IQ software installed, you would simply go to, soft, uh, to Corsair's website and you would install it. However, I do because I'm using one of their keyboards. So um, pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and bring it uh, to the foreground as it's stating here. 
And one of my options that are available, as you can see right here, is the Iron Claw RGB wireless mouse. So we're gonna click on it, and you have a few options within here, which is, you know, I guess what you would expect. You have an actions field. This is where you program your individual keys. Uh, as shown here, this is, to be honest with you, my only real frustration within the entire software suite is the lack of intuity of how to program your individual keys, and I will show you that in just a little bit. Lighting effects, kind of fun. They're simple. You know, you go in here, if I want to have a rainbow option, I can do that. If I want to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do something. Let's do, uh, I don't know, I like, oh, what's this? Let's do a rainbow wave. And I can go ahead and say I want to have it directional be from the to the right. Um, and, I don't know, pretty straightforward, I suppose, huh? You can do that. And this is what the mouse looks like. I mean, pretty straightforward. Looks good. Nothing exciting. Uh, if you want to do, let's do a spiral rainbow. I don't know if that really will do much, but again, the whole uh, top and a logo of the mouse will, will work. Uh, you have your scroll zone that you could work on as well. You know, if you wanted to view that. I want to go to my front, do this, and you can, you know, I just literally do them all. So what you're doing here is when you select these, you deselect, you're saying, okay, I don't want the scroll zone to work, but I want this and the front zone. So you could assign those differently. So right now I have all three zones functioning as a spiral rainbow. So why not? Let's do... Um, uh, let's just leave it on rainbow puke because why is it, what's the matter at this point? I'm just going to leave it. So we can come back to um, top view. Um, you have your DPI setting. This is where you can go and you can actually change your DPIs. Now one thing I want to note is you do have a sniper option, right? And that sniper option is you actually have to disable one of these to then allow for the sniper option to be one of your clicks. And the sniper option actually has to be assigned to a key, which I don't like that. Again, they could have done something a little smarter with it, but that's fine. So right now the default is 800 DPI on your lowest setting, 1500 DPI on your middle, and then 3000 on the side. Personally, I have never used an 18,000 DPI setting. I don't even know how a person would do so because you touch it and your mouse would be, you know, four screens over. I, it's crazy. But uh, anyway, and you can tell what setting you're on based upon uh, these. The default is this button here, your top button, changes your DPI up. So now I'm at 3000 DPI, as you can see by the indicator on the side of the mouse. And this one here will take it and move it down. So now I'm at, at 1500 DPI, now I'm at 800 DPI. So real straightforward. And again, you can assign these to whatever you want. You know, if I wanted to have this one be 12,000, uh, and I'll do that. It's just, holy criminy, is that sensitive. That's crazy. Um, and it's real time. So, you know, and you could go in here and, and you could assign it by manually typing. Uh, I'll put it at 3200. Why not? And it, it's real simple. I mean, it just, it, it works fine, right? And you could change the color. If it, so if I want my indicator to be something other than cyan, let's say I wanted it to be, I don't know, purple. Now my indicator is purple. So just as an, exa as an example, if I want my sniper color to be something other than yellow, I could change that to, you know, whatever. Here, let's make it white. There we go. So the sniper color will now be white. Why not? So anyway, you have that. You have uh, your performance settings. So they're talking about, do you want angle snapping on? Do you want uh, a profile indicator? Which, you know, that, that's going to be part of... Uh, these buttons here, or I'm sorry, your profile is right here. Um, and then you have your, and, but you'd have to have multiple profiles to be switching. And you have your en enhanced pointer precision, so your pointer speed, so it all ties in. Um, and then you have your surface calibration. In order to use this feature, please attach a USB cable from the mouse to the PC, which it feels perfect to me right now. I don't see a need to calibrate it any further than what I'm at. Um, I have used it as my daily driver at work for a little bit. 
uh, fraction for about a week because I wanted to feel how it was. I wanted to be able to say, okay, this is my honest opinion of how I feel the mouse works. Um, and then when I plug it in here for some gaming, same thing. So this is where my, I'm going to start off with this. This is where my main frustration lies is within the actions button because what you have to do is actually assign an action to the individual um, key that you want to change, which doesn't sound all that bad, but in a moment you're going to notice here. So if I'm going to select this one and say, I want that to um, be a, not a macro, let's go to a keystroke. Let's say I want this to be a keystroke and I want it to be, I, I don't know why, but let's say I want it to be the K key. Okay. It's assigned. I don't have to do anything else now. And if I'm going to go into notes, I'll just bring this up so you can see. And I push that button, I get Ks. And the clicks are great. I mean, it feels wonderful. But then here's the challenge. I, I would have to label this as K keystroke, but it doesn't tell me oh, at a glance that, oh, hey, this key has been assigned. It says, oh, I got, you know, I've got something assigned as a keystroke. So I, I can go on this and I, I'm going to go ahead and label that K because, again, why not? But the problem is, again, I'd have to go back and say, okay, oh, what did I have assigned? Oh, I have that assigned as a K. And I could program them all individually and do that. But that's ridiculous. What I think they should do, and this is my opinion. It, I'm just going to show it compared to um, Swarm here which I don't have my leader plugged in. Let me plug in my leader here real quick. Okay, so I have my leader mouse plugged in and this is where I get frustrated with Corsair software they, where they could have done a much better job. If I wanna do a button assignment, I can simply look at this and go, okay, what do I got? Oh, well key number one is assigned to a click. Key number two is assigned to a menu button. Key number three, my middle button, is assigned to numpad eight. So this is a profile that I use for one of my first one of my character or my tunes in Star Wars The Old Republic. But my point is, is I have an overview of what, of what everything I've got assigned quickly, including shift keys. This is a different mouse that we'll cover at a, a later point. I love this mouse, mouse, by the way. Specifically, I love the software, minus a couple of things. Well, that's a, that's a whole nother conversation for a different day. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. This, however, is, where they fall short in the software and seems to be the number one complaint outside of installation errors. Now, I didn't experience many installation errors. I came in, I installed it, I did a firmware update and I'll show you how simple that is as well here in a moment because I've already recorded that. Uh, but it's outside of this, the mouse is awesome. I'm gonna speak to that here real quick. One, you when you click with this mouse, it is a definitive tactile click. I mean, it feels nice. There is nothing that I can complain about at all with regards to how the switches feel, the response. When you're moving, I feel like there's no latency uh, to speak of. There's no lag. I couldn't tell if this is uh, wireless versus a wired mouse. I have slightly larger than average hands, I feel. I like how this mouse feels. It feels natural to me. I am one to more uh, gravitate towards a larger mouse. Uh, a mouse that I also will talk to probably next week is the Logitech G502 uh, wireless, the new one they just came out with. I think they call it the Lightspeed. That mouse is a lot narrower. Mount, the buttons feel great on that one as well, but I lean towards this one because of just how it feels my hand. It feels fantastic, feels natural. All of the keys on here, they have a nice clickiness. The thumb keys for the most part, and including the finger keys up here, the, the top two, they have a nice feel to them. They're, they're simple. You can assign them to whatever you want. If I wanted to be, um, if I wanted to be something other than a profile keys, such as what I did here, I can go ahead and leave it that way. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this back to the default because, that's right. Okay, so default is just coming from deleting whatever macro you assign to it, right? So there you go, I got rid of the macros, now everything's back to default. So I can honestly say that this thing just felt 
nice. You play a game with it, it feels nice. And in fact, I can go ahead and I can load up, uh, I'll load up Overwatch here in a moment. We'll come back into that. Okay, so uh, back into this. Um, every click feels real natural. I'm, I don't have this thing set up on my, for an actual profile, but I also typically use my game pad from uh, Orb Weaver, my Orb Weaver Stealth for, for movement. But as a whole, I would say that this thing feels great. I mean, there's literally, oops, I don't know what happened there. Oh, there we go, out of quick play. All right, let's go back into a different one. I'll kick this out. Oh, I like using him. Yeah, I guess, McCree. You know, what I could do is I could program um, the buttons to be, you know, a quick reload. Um, you, know, I, you know, hero change, whatever I want it to be, but obviously everybody knows that. But, and, you know, again, I want to emphasize, even though I'm playing right now, and I'm probably going to suck because I don't have this, I'm not actually using my... Uh, Normal setup. There we go. So outside of me not being an amazing Overwatch player, even though I did okay before I got booted because I uh, got interrupted, but whatever. Um, I would say that the mouse it has a great feel um, as long as you have larger hands. I think that some of the smaller hands, as I've read in some of the comments on uh, Newegg and Amazon, if you have smaller hands, apparently people don't feel that it's that com comfortable. Um, the other thing is you can't change the weight of it at all, like you can with, say, the uh, Logitech G502 Lightspeed. Um, but other than that, uh, I am actually comfortable with the weight of it. Uh, again, clickiness, responsiveness. Uh, you definitely know when you're doing an action on the mouse. The wheel is... I mean, when they say it's a wheel, they, they are not joking. It's literally a tire is what it looks like and feels like uh, on the, the mouse wheel itself. Um, battery life seems to be a num another item of concern for most people with wireless mice. It's okay. Um, I did notice that if I left it on, Overnight, it doesn't seem to shut itself off or recognize that it's not being used. Not like the uh, Logitech one does. And again, I'll get back to that. Uh, however, it seems to be on par with what my, my Rocket Leader is. Uh, I can get a good solid, you know, six to eight hours of gameplay or constant use out of it with the lights on. I'm sure if we shut the lights off, uh, it would probably last a little longer. Uh, I do like that fact that it does have the Bluetooth option as well. That's very interesting. Um, imagine being able to play the, on this on a, the 2.4 gigahertz, as long as you don't have any other crazy wireless interference in here. That is one side note, but also a nice forethought on the part of Logitech with regards to connectivity. I could simply be using it here, and then if I wanted to switch over to a different machine quickly, I could just flip it to Bluetooth and connect that way and toggle between two different machines. I don't want to say instantaneously, but quickly. Uh, effortlessly. Uh, outside of that, with it being priced at 80 bucks, it seems to be on par with 
um, most higher end uh, wireless mice. Now I will say that this is less expensive than the Rocket Leader. It's much less expensive than the Logitech G502. It's less expensive than the um, ROG, I think it's called the Spatha mouse. They're a uh, very, very large wireless gaming mouse that again, I think I could use some improvements on that one as well. Uh, so when it comes to a wireless mouse, mouse feel wise, this has got to be my favorite for just overall feel and comfort. I prefer something with more programmability. This does have the ability to program 10 buttons as we've already seen within the, um, uh, the IQ software. But um, for my purposes for gaming, because I typically play Star Wars The Old Republic on MMO, which it's going to have many things available for um, um, actions that I would like to have programmed uh, outside of using macros and that, again, don't always work out well for multiple reasons. Um, I would prefer more buttons or more options to be programmed. Uh, this, the 10 buttons is a limitation for myself. If I'm playing a game such as uh, Overwatch or you know Destiny or something where it doesn't have a ton of potential assignable options, yeah, it's gonna be, it's, it's fantastic. I would probably use this over anything else out there. Um, but because of the lack of programmable buttons like I would like to see something where again has a couple more options over on the side similar to the ones that are on the left and as opposed to this button that's above the two here as an option button I would prefer to see this as a wheel like what was on the MMO 7 by Mad Cats or the toggle that's on the uh, the rocket leader or, or the rocket tie-on. Again, I would actually prefer the wheel because again, uh, less chance of failure, almost like a secondary mouse or a scroll button, if you will. And then uh, it'd be nice to have some sort of a, um, like a target button uh, or a joystick that's depressible to give you an additional one click in and say four distinct clicks, you know, north, south, east, west type of situation. That would be the only way that this button would be, or this mouse would be the perfect mouse for me, if you will, so I could suit all games and all, everything that I do. Outside of that, I just, I love the look, I love the feel. It does tie in uh, nicely with obviously Corsair software. It's pretty simple. So give you a couple look overs of it so you can see how everything looks. And uh, hopefully you like today's video. Um, I will be covering the Logitech G502 Lightspeed coming up here in the very uh, near future. We'll talk about that one. Um, anyway, if you liked today's video, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, you know you can do it. Hopefully it's not that one. Please hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for the next videos coming up. Thanks.